In this video, we're going to talk about meningitis. So what is meningitis? Itis is inflammation of the meninges. And what the meninges are, if you don't remember from A and P, is around the brain and the spinal cord, there is various layers, and the meninges are one of the layers that surround the brain and the spinal cord. And there's inflammation. And what this inflammation is caused is by an infection, which is either viral, fungal, or bacterial. Viral meningitis is uh, quite common, but it resolves on its own, typically without treatment, usually not so bad. Fungal uh, meningitis is typically caused with AIDS because they have all kinds of weird immunodeficiency disorders with AIDS and they're at risk for all kinds of fungal infections. The main one that we're going to talk about today, the severe one, is bacterial meningitis. And there's, uh, if you went to college, and most of you watching this video probably are in nursing school right now, you had to have a vaccine for bacterial meningitis, and that's because uh, one of the risk factors is overcrowding and being in dorms and in classrooms with lots and lots of people. So that's a risk factor for bacterial meningitis. Also, having uh, another infection, especially something around the head, such as an ear infection or sinusitis, which is an infection of the sinuses, because uh, the, the distance from the sinuses or from the ears to the brain and the brain tissues is really close. A uh, head injury also puts you at risk for getting meningitis because when uh, with a head injury or spinal injury if any of those layers uh, like the meninges are torn then bacteria can get inside them. Also immunosuppression puts you at risk for any kind of infection. So what are some signs and symptoms? So let's think about meningitis. This is around the brain and the spinal column. So we're going to be seeing neurological uh, signs and symptoms such as uh, the main three, headache, think about it, you have lots of pressure and swelling around the head, you're going to have headache, knuckle uh, or neutral, nuchal rigidity. I'm not talking about your knuckles here, I'm talking about a stiff neck, and this is one of the big signs, you don't really see this with anything else except for meningitis. And photophobia, this is sensitivity to light. So if you have someone come in with headache, the neck is real stiff, and they got photosensitivity, those are the three main things you have, red flag meningitis. Also, they have infection, so they can have fever and chills. Uh, when you have swelling around the brain, it puts you at risk for nausea and vomiting. You'll see an altered level of consciousness. It's affecting the brain. They may get to the point oh, where they're having confusion, up to seizures to coma, depending on how severe it is. So I have here seizures. And then you got these two signs. And, and, and teachers love to talk about these signs because it has a name to it. I hadn't actually seen any of these on the tests. But you got the Koenig sign and the uh, uh, Brudinsky sign. And uh, just go to Google Images and look those up and uh, you can see what those are. But it has to do with uh, problems with bending the neck. So Koenig is, uh, when you have the patient, uh, they're laying down and their neck is extended and their knees are bent, when you try to straighten the leg out, you have irritation on these meninges so they're going to have pain. With Brudinsky's, uh, when you have the neck flexed, it causes their legs to flex. And what it does is basically their spine wants to bow. And it just has to do with irritation of the spinal uh, meninges. Let's go to diagnosis. Well, you can see in a CT and an MRI uh, that there's inflammation going on around part of the spinal column or around the brain. You also, uh, you did this because you look at, you saw they had headache, the neck rigidity, and photophobia. So of course, signs and symptoms, do the CT, now, to figure out, is it viral, fungal, or bacterial, what they need to do is they need to get a sample of cerebral spinal fluid. And so they'll do a spinal tap, and then what they'll do is they'll analyze it, and they'll see that there's bacteria in there, viral, fungus. They're going to see low glucose, and what this has to do is, well, the bacteria is eating it all, and high proteins because, well, there's lots of bacteria in there. So they'll analyze it, and they'll see, hey, they have meningitis. So what do you do for bacterial meningitis? Droplet isolations, and this is because you don't want it to spread. Also, seizure precautions because they're at risk for seizures, and so you want to pad the beds to make sure if they were to hit their head on any of the rails, they're padded with a blanket, it's not going to hurt them as much, and you'll have suction uh, right by in case they stick, maintain their airway if they're drooling during a seizure or anything. Now, uh, as far as care for a patient with meningitis, you also want to monitor uh, and treat and prevent increases in intracranial pressure. I have another video, a great video, about intracranial pressure. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to make sure they don't run a fever, 
uh, because fevers can cause increased, anything that causes increased pressure in the brain will lead to stuff like seizures and other problems. So make sure they're not running a fever, decrease the signal, turn the lights down low, and uh, don't have a lot of loud sounds. Keep the head of bed at 30 degrees to have good blood flow around the brain. And you want to have them avoid straining. You don't want them being constipated. You may need to give them a laxative or whatnot. And you don't want them coughing and sneezing uh, a whole lot. All right. How do you treat meningitis, though? If it's bacterial, you want to give them antibiotics. Uh, and this is going to be the main treatment. Uh, as far as other symptoms, you want to give them anti-epileptics if they're having seizures. Antipyretics if they're having fevers. And uh, steroids can help by getting rid of swelling around the spinal column and around the brain. So this is meningitis.